Uh, I'm Neil Drum. I work for the Drupal Association on the engineering team there. Uh, so we keep Drupal.org running, including subsites like events.drupal.org, uh, groups.drupal.org, uh, and of course uh, uh, our GitLab installation at uh, git.drupalcode.org. So uh, uh, first of all, uh, you know, why are we doing GitLab? Uh, you know, we're, uh, it's, the pro initiative is really to improve the developer tools on Drupal.org, make, make it easier to uh, contribute to Drupal. And uh, <clears throat> we, you know, we've had GitLab on, uh, on Drupal, get.drupalcode.org for uh, probably couple years now, uh, and we're not using all of its capabilities that make sense for us to use. Uh, so uh, we want to use more, more, Git, more of GitLab, and you know, we're a small team, so uh, we're only four people on staff and some contractors. Uh, and yeah, merge requests are a good example. Like We could have built that from scratch on a uh, well, build stack of Drupal.org. Like, um, you know, Drupal's a good development platform. We could build build things with it, but uh, yeah, it just didn't make sense when uh, GitLab has that built already. Uh, and of course, there's going to be trade-offs. Uh, you know, we've been building a bespoke system exactly for our needs for uh, a couple decades, and uh, we're giving up that control and customization. And uh, you know, we get what GitLab provides. They're a public company. Uh, with a product, uh, it's not very customizable, which you know, uh, kind of the opposite of, of Drupal, but you know, it enables them to make a product that works consistently without uh, too much of a, of a developer team. Uh, and we're also giving up uh, what was mostly a single database for Drupal.org. Uh, so you know, we can't join across to you know, get related data uh, or like put things together in a view the same way we did before. Uh, so some some things were straightforward before, uh, you know, finding ways to replace or uh, uh, or just decide we don't need them. So. Uh, yeah, big picture here. Uh, green things are things we're uh, doing uh, right now in progress, and uh, we're looking at uh, all the issue. We're planning all the issue-related stuff, and I'll come back to this a couple times. Uh, and at the same time, as all of this, uh, the ones with the uh, Drupal logo, uh, those are things that uh, help us. Uh, Update, update past Drupal 7. Drupal.org still runs on Drupal 7, and you know, we, we need to upgrade uh, just like any other big Drupal site. Uh, so account creation, uh, that's, this, that part is not exactly GitLab related. Uh, basically, you know, the overall goal is make it easier to contribute to Google, uh, to Drupal. Uh, and we had, uh, we'll have currently a basically custom single sign-on system called uh, Bakery that's a little bit, uh, you know, it works, it does its job well, but, um, you know, it's maintenance to uh, update that to Drupal 9 and, and beyond. Uh, so we're looking at using uh, Key Cloak, which is a, uh, a product, uh, open source thing, uh, project to run single sign-on. And uh, once we get that done, we could enable uh, social sign-in. You know, you'd sign in through Google account, sign in GitHub account, uh, federated login for uh, camps, and anyone else who wants to you know, log in with the Drupal.org account. Uh, and you know, we're going to have to bakery had some tools for profile syncing that was still kind of custom. Uh, Key Club, same deal, like it'll be kind of custom uh, built uh, user profile syncing. Uh, so yeah, on to uh, the actual GitLab stuff. Uh, project pages, uh, there's no major change. Uh, those are gonna stay on Drupal.org. Uh, pretty much as they are, uh, you know, projects, uh, project browsing, 
that's uh, that's where you have basically a app store you know, project browsing. It's where you download uh, find projects. As, you know, meta, you want metadata, ways to sort and filter things, uh, filter by what's compatible with uh, whether you're using Drupal nine or ten. Uh, and yeah, it's just not something that, that GitLab provides because GitLab's uh, code repository. Uh, releases again, no major change. Uh, the looks bigger. Uh, so yeah, we uh, Drupal core has some packaging requirements that we need to make sure are done consistently for every project. So we want to keep packaging uh, on on the old stack for now. Uh, GitLab does have releases. We could reevaluate this in the future, but it just wouldn't be, uh, yeah, wouldn't be a big impact since it's only maintainers have uh, are creating releases, and that process for the most part uh, works. Uh, and we also need the uh, um, Drupal specific composer endpoint uh, since there, that works around some de uh, Drupalisms and dependency management. Uh, so we're keeping packages.drupal.org uh, as is. Uh, GitLab does have its own uh, packages repository service, uh, but uh, yeah, again, it's not customizable, it's not what we need. Uh, so some things that have been changing, a uh, few Probably, probably a couple months ago now, uh, we moved SSH key management to GitLab. Uh, so that's under uh, the user menu under preferences. Uh, that's also uh, where you can put in GPG keys. We allow that, allow that as well. And uh, the preferences, that's also where uh, GitLab has uh, dark mode and things like that that you can use on uh, that site. Uh, and kind of a lot of the pre-work is simplifying Drupal.org. Uh, so we want to keep, uh, and that's all to make the upgrade uh, past Drupal 7 to uh, Drupal 9 uh, easier. Uh, so, you know, we have a big database of all the commit metadata that uh, you know, we, we could not, we could not have that. Uh, so that means uh, the, you know, if you remember the maintainer's block on project pages, that used to count up the number of commits. Uh, but uh, now we just simply show the maintainers. Um, and uh, that includes people who uh, yeah, maintain the project but don't, uh, haven't made commits, so non-code contributions. Uh, Documentation, GitLab has uh, a few more options uh, for where you can put documentation. Uh, so uh, GitLab pages is something we will be providing. So uh, the link uh, below documentation has simplified it because we, uh, in the past, it was really tailored for the Drupal documentation, those entity references. And, if it's a separate site on GitLab pages, you can't have an NT reference to that. Uh, and yeah, more links to the uh, stuff like GitLab activity and commit logs on uh, GitLab. We're not replicating that uh, on Drupal.org like we used to. And um, you know, we are planning on moving issues over to GitLab, so that issues block that will go away. There's not going to be a way to count up all the issues, uh, must that's in GitLab's API that, uh, so that will, could go as simple as just to link the issues are over here. Uh, profile pages, uh, so those were done last couple weeks. Uh, there's now a link to the year Drupal code profile, so that's where all the, you know, commit, uh, commits and Merge request comments, merge uh, all of the activity there is uh, on your Drupal code profile. Uh, and again, 
uh, used to have at the very bottom a list of here's how many commits you made to every project, uh, but you know, we don't have that database anymore, so it's just here's every project you're a maintainer of. Uh, and we went ahead and uh, changed the issue, issue credit to list all of the issue credits you've accumulated since we started tracking issue credit. Uh, it, it was one year in the past, uh, but especially for people, you know, there's no reason to have a one year sledding window. Uh, cause if you take a year off, that's, that's what people do. Uh, Uh, and GitLab CI, that's a main focus right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you know, we have Drupal CI is a kind of uh, centralized stack of things, custom built for Drupal. Uh, so you know, out of the box, it tests the Drupal project and integrates well with the testing uh, frameworks and core. Uh, but you know, it's gotten cumbersome to maintain, and uh, uh, GitLab CI should be a lot better once we're there. But uh, uh, and, yeah, we have uh, dispatcher.drupalci.org. It's a public Jenkins server. Jenkins isn't really meant to be on the public internet, and yeah, just a lot of bespoke tooling around CI that we could. Uh, offload to GitLab. Uh, you know, what we spent a lot of the pre-work on is just making sure uh, the infrastructure is set up. You know, it's Kubernetes, but that, that doesn't necessarily make it simple. We still have to make sure it works consistently and um, you know, we're getting the most processing power we get uh, out of our money. Uh, Drupal CI instances are pretty heavy, like 32 processor boxes, like well beyond what you'd get in the free or open source tier of uh, any other um, CI provider, like uh, GitHub App Actions and stuff like that. Because uh, we, especially Drupal Core, has a lot of tests. Uh, but that's in, a, that's in a good spot for now. Uh, and actually running the tests. Uh, GitLab CI, you know, it's meant for arbitrary software projects, not Drupal projects. So every maintainer is going to set up, have to set up their own GitLab CI YAML file. Uh, everyone's going to be, going to be pretty much on their own uh, if, if they want testing. Uh, but you know, we can find ways to make that easier. There is a concept of uh, templating. You see. Uh, the built-in uh, dependency scanning that GitLab does, the, uh, you know, your dependency has a security update. Uh, that is, yeah, there's a template for that that's included in GitLab. Uh, so we can make uh, we can make templates for Drupal projects, but you know, we need to uh, figure out the best way to do that. And make find ways to make that transition easy for project maintainers. Uh, and yeah, that will in the end make things a lot more straightforward since it replaces both the scheduling on Drupal.org. That UI has always been a little bit cumbersome. Uh, everything's in this YAML file, basically. Uh, and with GitLab CI, you know, it's, it's not going to test patch files. So effectively, when a project may, you know, Transition to GitLab CI. There'll be project by project since each maintainer has to do something. Uh, but yeah, when a single project moves to GitLab CI and turns off Drupal CI, they're effectively saying everything needs to be in your merge requests because uh, patch files won't be tested. Uh, and uh, yeah, one thing people have done a lot with uh, patches. Uh, is use those on their production sites, put them in uh, their composer JSON with composer patches and deploy there. Uh, you, you, you can get a diff from a merge request, you got .diff or .patch the end of the merge request URL, but don't, don't put that in your uh, composer JSON file uh, because that's, that's a dynamic patch. It'll change when someone uploads new code to that merge request and 
you should be deploying things that you've read and understand, especially if they're patches. So save a local copy of that and uh, put the path to that local copy in what you're deploying uh, so you always know you're not uh, deploying a unreviewed code that might have bugs or worse. Uh, and of course, you know, the whole thing, uh, patches or deploying patches is not ideal to begin with. Like, leave a review of the patch and help move the issue towards <coughs> completion. Hopefully, maintainer sees that and you don't have to be deploying a patch to your site. Uh, so, issue forks and merge requests. Uh, that was kind of our stopgap to get merge requests working, get, get Lab CI working. Uh, so that's pretty much in maintenance mode. We'll do, we'll fix any big issues that come up that are preventing people from using that and preventing people from moving to GitLab CI. Uh, but since we are planning on moving issues in the future, uh, this is in, in maintenance mode. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's some rough edges. We're gonna do other things than, than fix them unless they're uh, preventing people from working. Uh, so, covered uh, account creation, uh, no, no big changes with projects and releases, simplifying uh, Drupal.org and GitLab CI. Uh, so, yeah, issues. That's the, that's the big chunk of, of work. Uh, and uh, what's different about Drupal issues is uh, versus uh, GitHub, uh, GitLab is, they tend to be collaborative. You know, we ask people to come to sprints, uh, contribution days, and uh, you know, pick up an issue and do a bit of work on it. And there's usually multiple people who work on uh, any given issue. Uh, so you know, on average, there's six people uh, for every core issue, two people for every web form issue who are accredited. Uh, and you know the average uh, pull request uh, on GitHub. That's if you want to contribute to that and you didn't start it, you have to either ask for access to it or make a separate pull request. Uh, so yeah, we want to keep things collaborative. Uh, keep things like uh, uh, the issue forks. You know, anyone can push, push to that. Um, and uh, you know, keep issue credit. That's you know, that's been a big driver of contribution from uh, organizations. And uh, you know, we we need to do a full migration of all of the issues, all of the history. Uh, so no, uh, you know, we can't have an archive on Drupal.org because you know, we want to keep that archive in some sort of structured data. Uh, a uh, if it was static HTML, we get, you know, we get GDPR requests, right, to be forgotten, and, you know, if someone has contributed to 100 issues and decides they want to delete their account, you know, we're not going to go through and manually remove that from uh, a static archive. And if we kept a Drupal archive of it in, in field data, then, you know, same as if we hadn't done a migration, uh, you know, all the structure of data is still there to be migrated. So. We need to migrate every issue of all time uh, uh, to GitLab. Uh, issue credit, you know, GitLab just doesn't have a system for that. Um, they're uh, they're working on things. Uh, we're uh, working with them to see if we can get to uh, something that works for us. Uh, it might be more simple than our uh, kind of bespoke system. Uh, but yeah, either either GitLab will deliver something that works for the Drupal community uh, on our timeline, or uh, we'll re rebuild it uh, on Drupal. Uh, we're kind of assuming we'll uh, rebuild it on Drupal for now, but you know, we'll change course uh, if uh, uh, if GitLab uh, has what we need in the future. And uh, yeah, there's other stuff to work on in the meantime. So we haven't really started building this beyond uh, prototypes. 
uh, for GitLab. Uh, it, and issue migration, again, um, you know, if you have a big database of all of the uh, issues, you can do things like have entity references to, to issues, have the inline references. Uh, you need to find all of the places where we use that and replace them. Uh, so change records, those will need you know, probably links uh, off-site to get.tripleCode.org instead of those entity references. We may or may not put the extra work in to preserve like that yeah, color things that are fixed, green, uh, and cross them out if they're closed. Uh, same with the inline references. Um, honestly, probably won't put too much effort into the inline references since uh, those uh, yeah. Those appear on some documentation pages and other places outside the issue queue, but the main place you see those is uh, issues referencing other issues in their issue summary and comments and uh, change records. Uh, so, you know, we need to, yeah, kind of cut off those ties before we start, start really migrating issues. Uh, and then the actual migration, uh, like like we've did for issue forks and some other things, it's uh, and GitLab CI, project by project. So project will opt in and uh, we'll do that migration. Uh, and we can migrate all of the metadata, all of those like six or eight fields uh, there on issue pages, and preserve as much as possible, and, and try and make it a smooth transition. Um, but yeah, some things are tough, like uh, I don't think there's any way around me numbering all the issues. Uh, and yeah. So I think that is just about everything. Uh, so yeah, the meta issue is uh, it's there. Uh, we have a Slack channel on Drupal Slack, and yeah, the way to help out is uh, you know, test things as they become available, use merge requests. Uh, right now, a handful of projects have GitLab CI enabled, and all general projects. General projects are, uh, you know, there's themes, modules, uh, and general projects, and that's, you know, if you have something that's not a module or a theme, but uh, benefits from code being hosted on Drupal.org. Uh, and yeah, if you're a project maintainer, um, <clears throat> you know, use GitLab CI when we make it available. We're holding off on making it generally available until we do have uh, some of those templates and stuff in place uh, because we don't necessarily want uh, you know, 100 project maintainers coming up with 100 solutions that. Uh, you know, they won't be able to get much help troubleshooting since everything will be different. So we want to kind of guide project maintainers in the same direction if they have regular Drupal projects with regular Drupal testing. Uh, yeah, any any questions? Yeah. Um, I have two questions. One is, will there be a point where, and I might have missed this because I joined a little later, I apologize, um, where all projects will be forced to move into yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then the second question that I have is, is the GitLab CI uh, infrastructure, the uh, is that configurable for project as well? Like where maybe you give them that template to start? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's configurable. That, it, by default, it's configurable for a project. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, every project will have to have their own GitLab CI YAML file. And hopefully, we have a really helpful template. but. Otherwise, you're on your own, <laughs> like like you are on uh, GitHub. Like there's yeah, you know, there's no one way to test the software projects uh, unless you're in a little ecosystem like Drupal, where there's uh, there's best practices for testing Drupal projects. So you're just using the off-the-shelf GitLab CI. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's that's the only option we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I know. Yeah. Actually, I think that's really good for simply testing as an example because it's very bespoke. So. Yeah.
right. Yeah, we have like 15 minutes, so yeah. So, um, how soon will the CI renders be available? Uh, so CI, uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, I don't have an exact answer, but we're beta testing, uh, which it's not really the right term. We're, uh, yeah, there's a handful of projects, about 20 or so, that have GitLab CI enabled, and the hope is we, they help guide us towards that template, and then once we have that available, working smoothly, then we'll make it generally available. And um, yeah, probably, some number of weeks, certainly less than six months, I would hope. Uh, but uh, I think in reality, probably around a couple months, if I had to guess. I have a couple of things I'd like to ask you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it, it was really about the timing and just figuring yeah. out, like, I mean, making generally available, and then when the final, that final cutover happens, like, what's the right timing for that? Yeah. Just sort out, like, like um, yeah, final cutover, that's going to be somewhat dependent on uh, how quickly it's adopted. Uh, and, you know, a lot of this, you know, it is a lot of play it by ear. Uh, like, uh, you know, there's only four of us. Uh, yeah, I'm working on, what am I doing for, I'm doing, uh, I'm personally concentrating on a lot of the decoupling uh, Drupal dot or making it more simple, uh, kind of preparing everything. So uh, the profile page changes, the products page changes, and uh, the user login stuff. But yeah, there's some weeks where, uh, yeah, get uh, delayed by some production issue that needs to be solved. And it's, we, yeah, it's a lot of play by ear. We don't, unfortunately, don't have a schedule since uh, yeah, we're also supporting the production site and with a small team, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the removal of the patches, I just kind of like, I feel like there's some optimal, like, not right before the release of Drupal 10, yep. or, I mean, the other challenge that I see that's happening is a lot of patches are coming in for, like, PHP 8.1, and they're, like, ridiculous. Like, and it, it, those patches seem like they come, they, for minor tweaks to things like PHP, they're always patches. They rarely merge requests. People are just more comfortable knocking them out. And it, it, yeah, it's going to be like yeah. we're going to see. We're going to have to prepare ourselves for a slight dip while people adjust to it. Or mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully, it won't be right before or after the release of Drupal 10. Yeah, yeah, we we do have a monthly meeting with the core maintainers, and yeah, we work pretty closely with them. So especially you know whenever a project or whenever the Drupal project itself. Whenever they decide to make the cut over to uh, GitLab CI, that's that's up to them. But uh, and yeah, at some point we'll have to decide. Well, enough. We've made this easy enough. We've uh, enough projects have migrated and figured it out, and we're gonna have to pull the plug on Drupal CI. Uh, but yeah, this will yeah, there'll be wait for. Certainly, after course migrated, uh, migrated, and uh, yeah, whatever feels like the right time. I mean, there's inevitably going to be a long tail of modules that are not actively maintained. Whenever they come back to it, they'll, they'll have more, one more thing to catch up on. What, what's the cost? I, maybe you covered it, but like, I know Drupal CI actually costs a decent amount of money. Is GitLab CI reducing that cost, or making I mean, make it? It'll be effectively. Equivalent, um, maybe, yeah, it'll be, yeah. So Drupal CI is, I think, around four thousand a month. Um, I mean, give or take a thousand, depending on if there's contribution events going on or where we're where we are in the core development cycle. Because uh, it's really the core tests are uh, the costly ones that add up. But that should increase the the general. Availability because you know one of the problems with Drupal CI right now is you can only run it if you've got a release range out. Uh, but in GitLab, I mean, you can specify all sorts of conditions under which you can run yeah. pipelines and, and all that other stuff. Yeah, so yeah, what actually 
comp the compute itself will be the same. It's just moving it from one container to another. It's uh, the cost will be different if people configure it to do more testing. Because uh, our our UI kind of guides people is like you you pick one version of PHP, pick one version of uh, your database for issue testing. That's what the default is. But uh, GitLab CI, uh, you know, you can do a you know you want to do a matrix build of here's all the PHP versions and here's all the database versions. But if every project decides to test all of those combinations, then it'll cost more. Uh, so that's that's where the template part of the templating you know we want to guide project maintainers to have the build you know, like Drupal CI have the ability to test all the combinations, but really you only need to test once for the most part like if you have upgrade the database uh, and something breaks you're, you're in some sort of edge case anyway uh, I, I, there's probably a wonders if the, if, if, if there'd be more testing at similar cost levels just because GitLab CI is got to be they're getting the benefit of a lot of engineers working on it um, well, in the end, the testing, it's just code that runs on containers. And yeah, but the, the, all that optimization around the containers and, and you know, keeping that, keeping those costs for containers uh, I, I thought we also had per second billing for a while for the uh, the VM. We spit up, Drupal CI spins up VMs, uh, but and that's per second billing, so... Yeah, like we might shave off a few seconds in you know booting up a VM, uh, booting up a container versus booting up a no, VM. Uh, but I grew up booting up new VMs to hold those containers anyway. So yeah, compute itself is cost what it costs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, one thing with GitLab CI. The, there is a local runner for GitLab CI, so you can run the containers uh, locally. And that should be a lot smoother and more accessible uh, for local testing than uh, you know, Drupal CI. You know, there's there's a way to run Drupal CI locally, but not many people do it, so it's not well supported. Did you ever figure out how to simulate or, or go from Stage to stage to stage because it's always that was the problem I had with GitLab CI. I've used the the previous times. Like you could easily test what stage, but the um, moving the artifacts one stage to the next. Mm. Like, like I could have never figured out a way to test it all locally. Yeah, I am not too personally involved in the actual GitLab CI uh, setup, so yeah, I, I'm not that deep into it enough to know about the exact artifact retention and everything. Uh, but yeah, that's actually another challenge we'll have to solve pretty soon in general, art, art, artifact retention. Because uh, that, uh, I know uh, one of the projects in the uh, test programs, they wanted to save the resulting containers as artifacts, and those were 400 megabytes a piece. And for saving 400, you know, half a gigabyte per test run, uh, that adds up. So, yeah, we'll have to find ways to put limits on that, and yeah, but GitLab has that, and ways to, um, you know, manage that, keep that, uh, you know. We do on-premise, we, our GitLab install is hosted on uh, VMs on our own infrastructure, uh, but, you know, stuff like that uses arbitrary amounts of disk will have to do a remote mount to AWS and pay for, uh, yeah, pay for that storage. All right, any other questions? Is there like any sort of thought about trying to get the existing patches on Drupal.org into merge requests? Um, yeah, we don't have any specific plans there. I mean, it's certainly something we could do. We could build a bot that automates opening up all the merge requests. Um, it would be, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, to be a trade off to decide if it is worth it, worth it or not. Because uh, you know, it would only work if the path still applies. Um, sure. yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we could you know put even more engineering into it and you know branch from when the patch was posted and then probably would apply. Uh, and yeah, I would definitely not, yeah, I would, I, it would be disappointing to see people who are just like, here's the merge request for this patch and that's, that's all they do in the issue. Like, if you open the merge request for a patch, you should at least give it a bit of a review and comment as, as you go. It would be nice to be able to just click on a, like, the patches. I wouldn't say it automatically do, but if you saw a patch and you could click and say create a branch for this patch, mm -hmm. like just to get it out of there, like in one click, that would really encourage, that's the nudge some people need. Because they're like really uncomfortable with the process. And if it's, mm -hmm. if it's like click here and then get a list of commands, it might get them closer. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, you know, most requests aren't inherently easier than patches. It's still, uh, you, have to, you have to know Git, yeah. and like it's a bunch of commands. And if you're if you're familiar with it and you've done it a hundred times before, yeah, it's easy for you. But yeah, that first few times, like, was this patch program is basically the same level of learning as like what is this uh, Git branch command and uh, get pushed to a different place. Uh, so. Are you what about like the, I'm just curious, it's like old merge requests that just sit there, you know, like the issue's closed and there's a merge request that wasn't committed. Is there any thoughts on how to clean those up or do you even need to? Don't need to. Uh, yeah, the, uh, one of the requirements we had of GitLab itself uh, before we migrated uh, repositories to GitLab was uh, we needed the storage to be deduped. So, and, you know, before, you know, their startup company, it's, it was their job to put their venture capital funding into employees and, and disk space and growth. Uh, so, you know, before, you know, four years ago, uh, if you forked a repository on GitLab, it would be a full copy of everything. Right. But, yeah, we said, yeah, we're, That's great. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to... Uh, Use your product if, if it does that. They fixed it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we, yeah. We work with the GitLab team. We have a shared Slack channel uh, with them. So we have some some visibility. You know, we're uh, you know we're not paying customers, so we're not uh, necessarily the they're not doing everything we want. Uh, but yeah, we have a voice there. And you know, they're they're interested in uh, getting a solution for for credit because that's um, you know they see uh, yeah I think at some level they see it's worked for our community and there might be a business case for uh, something like issue credit and GitLab. I, I get the sense we're one of the biggest or most publicly visible open source users in GitLab. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, that's their, that's their uh, motivation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've seen uh, you know, more Drupal shops adopt their own uh, GitLab internally. And you know, if they see more Drupal companies uh, paying for GitLab for their internal work, then uh, yeah, that'll send a message to them as well. Since you know, they're a public company, they're they're not there to uh, you know, give us uh, software, uh, but it's great that they do. All right, I think we're getting close to time. So thanks. Thank you.